No. Straight off the bat. Didn't even yes, hesitate. No. Class. It's only taken 31 weeks. Straight to the f off. <laughs>Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of the third half. My name's Matt. I'm Jamie. Remember, if you want to be a part of the show, make sure you comment below or tweet us at the Rugby Revolt. Straight into your comments from last week's show, we had two five Pritchard two five. What are your thoughts? Twenty five, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on Ford and Youngs after the Wales game? Question mark. Amazing, weren't they? LOL. Bit facetious there, I feel. Yeah, I'm not sure he's being completely serious. Um, yeah, George Ford just had a shocker from the tee, didn't he? Mm. He's such a confidence player. If he if he misses his first one or two, mm, I tell you, gettable. He just I think he just gets up up inside his head. And also coming off the back of that season, he's not had a great season. I I, I can't really see any. I'm I'm trying to think of excuses for him. It was lovely weather. Yeah. The way the, the no, England no, pack were I going think, forward, but I just think he misfired. Do you know what, I think he needs some. He needs he needs to change something. He needs to bring in bring in some sort of. I don't know, psychological or, or, mm. or specific kicking help or something, just to help him with that side of his game. To be fair, his premiership stats this year weren't awful, but it didn't look good in mm. that game, did it? What, did he get one from right in front of the posts and he missed the rest of them? Well, whether, whether or not, I mean, him and, him and Farrell have been splitting the kicking game kind of for England, maybe. But I don't think, for, I don't think I, to be honest, I don't think Ford will start in Australia. Mm. I think Farrell will yeah. start at 10. I was no. tell you, on a side note, great to see Luther Burrell Really punch home yeah, against we'll Wales. Later. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll get to that later. Yeah, it was good. Ben Youngs, I, I feel like I feel it's a bit harsh including Youngs in that. Oh, he had a shocking start though. Yeah, so charge it, it's, down. His, his passing can be a little bit erratic mm. sometimes, but I think I, I think people misjudge him a lot because he he does like to pick the ball up and take a few steps, and a lot of people just chastise him immediately mm. for that. Yeah. But actually, a lot of the time, it, it, if if Somebody else cuts a good line off him. It's a brilliant tactic. Yeah. Yeah. And also, he scored a great try. So I think Young's was quite good. Ford wasn't great. Could have been trying a little hard, maybe, to impress yeah. Big Eddie. I mean, yeah, probably. now they're on, the, they're on the plane down there, probably as we speak. And maybe trying a little bit hard, but they don't really have any excuses for their the errors. It was a lovely day. The yeah, I, I think you're right. I think forward. Ford especially. Mm. He, he knows that Farrell is the Form 10. Yeah. Next comment, we have Tom Carvel. Thanks for your comment, Tom. Tom. Uh, hi, guys. Love the videos. Thank you. Yeah, um, you can, you wondering can again. What, what? You can comment again. Yeah, Keep absolutely. Wondering what you guys think of Scotland calling up Hugh Jones to the squad for the Japan tour. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? He's, he's playing well, he's decent player. rugby in the Stormers' back line. And, you know... Just well, Storm is not exactly renowned for their uh, running rugby. I think it's probably more of a shock to people that don't watch a lot of Super mm. Rugby, which is fair enough. Um, yeah, he's been going well in that in that backline. But as the as Tom pointed out, the fact that he's been called up ahead of Duncan Weir mm. is definitely a surprise because it leaves it leaves Scotland quite short of options at fly half. I'd say Rui Jackson will start. Mm. I don't know. For me, it's Duncan Weir's last performance. Still shines in my head his shocker in the Six Nations, and it, it's still kind of so I can see why he would have gone. But still, like you said, there's quite a bit of bit of heat on Jackson going to Japan. Yeah, and especially because he's not he's not been first choice at Wasps this year. Mm. He's played quite a lot of fullback for Wasps as well when he's come on. Though you think um, Jones's versatility? He can play centre, he can play wing, he can play back. Yeah, full back, but, but not fly half. Mm, yeah. Crucially, well, I guess. I guess. I mean, it's only a two-game tour, isn't it? Yeah. And so you can, I guess you can push out. Jackson will just start the two tests, won't he? And yeah. If they if they need to, I guess they'll call Weir up. Definitely, definitely a kind of left field selection, though. I think. Mm. Um, well, yeah, good. I think Scotland fans will be if he gets a game. James, yeah, I think absolutely. they'll be pleasantly surprised. He's well, he's got that real that real. He's a big unit. He's got yeah. that real X factor in the midfield, yeah. and I think that's what. Scotland miss a little in their midfield that real punch I think without Dunbar because Dunbar's injured isn't he yeah he provides that quite well mm. um, so it'd be interesting because yeah it'd be interesting to see if he actually I'd be, I, th I reckon it'll get a game definitely mm. next from Jay Brenz cheers for your comment Jay Brenz okay back to England who starts for 12 and who starts 6-7 on the Australian tour 
Uh, Luther Burrell. Bentio. Ooh, I don't know. He had a shocker for Leinster on the weekend. Leinster. Leinster. Yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> Leinster on the weekend. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think they'll start. I think they'll start. I think with Tulangi's injury, I think he wants that player in yeah, that shirt. That's true. And yeah. he picked him ahead of Burrell in the first place. So I think I think he'll throw him in. And I, I like Burrell, and I think he had a good he had a good game for England against Australia. Kind of understated, but good. But I don't think he's. I don't think he's England's answer at 12 long term. I just and think he's a I'm at international level, he's just with, a little bit with, limited. Yeah, but with with T.O. at 12, I'm still worried about England getting narrow. And I will talk about this over the next coming week, weeks because there's, they, don't want, they don't want to fall into the Welsh trap where you have... Mm, that's where, you, where you don't have a distributor at 12, and that's what Farrell offers at 12. Yeah, it yeah. gets it a bit wider. No, you're right. And... Yeah. You're right. Well, they may, maybe they'll go for maybe they'll stick with their Six Nations formula and go forward and Farrell. I mean, they didn't have to do it against Wales at the weekend, but with Farrell at twelve during yeah. the Six Nations, they got it the ball a bit wider and it gave the man so men a bit. Actually, I th- what I think what they might do, which would be interesting, is go To twelve or Burrell, go Joseph at thirteen. Mm. They're not distributors, but I actually think Alex Goode might come in at fullback. He's had an absolutely storming season. The- and, he, and he's a, he's a playmaker. He's a distributor. Mm. He's played a lot of ten, so he's the kind of guy that can give you. He can come into the line and give you that option mm. if you don't have it in the centres. Yeah. So mm. I wouldn't be surprised to see them do that because I think Jones wants that directness in the centres. I think he wants someone like Tio in there. Six seven. Uh, I think Jack Clifford has to play. Mm. He had a great game against Wales, and he's absolutely rapid. And if you if you got he, he's basically he's a lot like Michael Hooper, mm, I think. Yeah. He's versatile. He's very. Well, quick. he can play at six eight role very well, can't yeah, he? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's played seven a lot for Quinns as well. Mm, yeah. So I think he'll. I don't think know if he can start, start though. Ooh, that's yeah, that's a big call. Putting but, him on the stage like that. Yeah, but then but then I, I don't think in, in the <laughs> World Cup, you know, got, Rob Shaw, Haskell, these guys, they were part of that yeah. back row that just got absolutely decimated by Australia. I yeah. think they need to change it up a little bit. Try something else. Yeah, it's a big call. I, I think you have to go for the tried, the the p- proven combination. I think from the Six Nations, I think you have to go uh, Rob Shaw at six and Haskell at seven. Oh, do you know? I'm, I'm going to throw this one out there. How good was Launchbury for England? Mm, you're not going to say go to seven, will you? You're no, not no, 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 no. I'm going to say put Itoji at six. He's played a lot there for Saris. Put Itoji at six, and have Clifford at seven, Vunapola at eight. Yeah. How good is that back row? And then well, Launchbury and yeah. Cruz in the. In the second row, that's a, that's know. so mobile that pack. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Long term, that should sure be an option. That. Six seven, I think. I think I'm going to have to go uh, Rob Shaw and Haskell just because. See how they go in the first test. You still have three, so if you lose one, you have two to make amends. I think you have to do. I think you have to do that. Uh, right, let's do the news as we like to say. Uh, first up, uh, just uh, well, I do. You hate it. Um, a quick mention for all the competitions that came to an end last week. Sari's doing the double. Got to mm. say congratulations to them as, mu- as much as Matt hates it. Um, great win against Exeter. Really only one side in it until the second half, um, but then they put it to bed. Bristol finally made it up. Mm. Another scare in the championship final, though. They lost, <laughs> lost that second leg, um, but... Um, they, d- they did enough anyway, so they're I still finally think it's a stupid format. But okay, it is an awful format, and they should have been promoted about five years ago. But yeah. they kept bottling it, so yeah. it's good to see them finally in the Premiership. And Connett, Connett, yeah, Man doing alive. it for the underdogs. So good to see Pat Lamb after all the, the the shite he's gone through in Auckland and all that. He comes to Connett and really takes. The, oh, and everyone loves an underdog story. And th- there was actually a real element of of Kiwi play. The the little two pa- the two phase outside the little tap on outside the they do, they, extra they, channel yeah. was I think they've I think they very much embrace yeah. Pat Lamb there yeah. and what he wants to do yeah uh, brilliant yeah. absolutely yeah. fantastic for rugby that one and mm. hopefully Connacht will gain Push a lot on. of respect from that and not yeah. just be the kind of well they lose Henshaw now little don't they? brothers yeah I know Henshaw he goes to Leinster Leinster, yeah. Leinster mm. replaced TA. anyway well done Connacht great to see sure is um, quick mention. After that, for the new laws that are going to be used in the June internationals this year, I'm um, not going to go into detail for all of them. A little Most bit of a disadvantage to Northern Hemisphere teams coming yeah, down, kind of. not really playing. There's not really that. They used to. They're not like the the, main, the biggest one I think is the one with the mall. So mm. a man goes up, takes it the line out. 
what usually happens these days is part, they pass it to the man on the ground and then he kind yeah. of swims backwards in the mall, doesn't mm. he, to the back? Yeah. You can't do that anymore. The, you have to pass the ball back person by person to the back of the mall. Mm. Um, so I guess it just takes a bit longer to set rolling malls. I'm not really sure what the point of that change is, to be honest, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, there you go. New laws. Yeah. And a lot of movement, I guess, players-wise. Well, actually, no, sorry. Sonny Bill Williams re-signing with... NZ Rugby. Yeah, are you happy balloons. about that? You love them. Well, I'm happy because it means about three years you should be coming to the Canes. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing his tour of all the provinces. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's only... No, what, in three years we'll be... In three years we'll be World Cup again. Well, so he'll be yeah. binning Union and he'll be going... <laughs> he'll be chasing money somewhere. Yeah. Well, it, it makes sense. Uh, Tanu Munga was one of... Mm. The guys that enticed him over to France when he originally left mm. his rugby yeah, league contract was, yeah. about 10 years ago now. Yeah. So that was always going to happen. Um, good yeah, to see him stay in rugby anyway. It'll be good for the Blues to have him as well. They need a bit of oomph. They need they? a bit of experience too, I yeah. think. They, yeah. they, they've got all the, they've, they seem to have all the guys, they just don't have the, the nous. Mm. But no, it's nice yeah, to see him go to the yeah. Blues and he'll do well under Tanner. I, I like that combo. Right, guys, thank you very much for watching the show this week. Don't forget, if you want to get involved in any of the chat, drop us a comment below the video or tweet us at The Rugby Revolt. And if you don't want to miss any videos in future, then click above to subscribe. If not, we'll see you next time.